I'm Sasha Rogers and I'm a painter. I grew up in a family where my parents were both artists. My mother was a potter and a jewelry maker and my father was a painter. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a painter, not just an artist but a painter um, because I used to go with my father to get his art supplies to a store in Saskatoon that was called James Art Studio and it was a great big art supply store and I would go with my dad there and I found my heart racing when I was in that store and I wanted to touch everything on the shelves and I, I just wanted to be in that whole world so badly and I knew in those moments when I was in that store that that's that that is what I wanted to do with my life. So related to the Joshua Bell story, would you have stopped to listen to him at the Metro? I would have stopped, but I also understand why people walk by. I think that human beings are kind of complicated. I think sometimes context is very important for people. It's not an expectation to have a great musician in the subway system. The context of listening to music in a concert hall is very comfortable for them. But outside of that, somehow it's uncomfortable. What do you think is art? I think that art is an expression of the human spirit. There are no two souls that are identical. It's the uniqueness of the human spirit and its expression through the mind and the hand of the artist. I think art has a very important purpose in society and I think at this particular time that we're living in, it's much harder for it to feel like it has a purpose because we live in a very materialistic time. Art is seen as something which is kind of a frill or it's an unnecessary thing. But I think that art is an expression of a time. It can be an expression of a civilization. If we look back in history, every great civilization that there has ever been has had a very powerful expression of art that has developed alongside that civilization. The most compelling thing in a work of art is its spirit. And it's the one thing that you can't make happen. And if it happens, it's an absolutely wonderful thing, but it's a very difficult thing to put in. I need to prepare my own condition before I do my work. And I think that's one of the ways that we can attract spirit into a work of art. I think one of the other ways in which we can also attract spirit into a work of art is to not try and put too much into it, but to be open to the process itself, informing us of what it wants to be. So in a painting, a lot of times, I'll set up relationships that are very opposite from each other. The very first thing I do in a painting is I put a, I'll put a line through. And immediately I've established a relationship in the painting between what's top and what's bottom. So we call that a tensional relationship. And in painting, that's very important. And I think in music, it also is very important to set up polarities or things that pull against each other. And through that, you create a kind of a, ten a tension. So the paintings are neither about the top or the bottom, but they're about something that's in between that, in that relationship. So I'm not trying to describe one or the other, I'm setting up a relationship. And between that relationship, a third thing happens, which you're not really describing, but you're kind of inviting it in through the relationship. For me, I really love to work with this whole idea of intensities, and subtleties of light and dark. The, the pull or the tension between light and dark is a very important part of the painting for me. So there's another layer at that point. There's another layer of tension in the painting. And again, I'm not trying to describe light and I'm not trying to describe dark, but I'm setting up a relationship and in between those two, there is a kind of a poetry of light that happens in the painting that is neither of the dark or the light. And then I like to really play with this whole idea of a horizon because in nature, I don't know if you know this, but in nature, the horizon doesn't really exist. It looks like a line that you can reach and you can walk forever towards that line, but you will never reach that line. So it's a wonderful metaphor for the longing of the human condition where we long to connect deeply with something, but yet we never really do it's always kind of unknowable to us, which for me is this idea of God, which is an unknowable essence. So in this particular situation, I started noticing these thin little lines that I started wanting to do in the middle of the paintings. They became symbols 
of a kind of a liminal space, so a place that was neither of this world, but really it was not the next world either because that's completely intangible. So it became representative of this idea that we're in between states when we're in this life. So at the same time as it seems like it's two parts, it's actually not. It's got this line in the middle that is eternal. And it's always a very, very thin line because there's this idea that you can go there if you want to, but it's not easy. What's your most favorite art? Can you show us? So I like the work of Agnes Martin. And one of the reasons I like her work is because she is from Saskatchewan, and I'm from Saskatchewan. But also I like the, the way in which she's abstracted uh, notions of space in a really beautiful way. And I think also she's one of the few women in Canada that has gained an international reputation for her, for her work. Uh, and I really love her work. It's very, very minimal. It's more minimal than what I do, but I'm just inspired by the sense of space and light in her work and scale. Her paintings are really big. So I find that when a painting is really big like that and very simple, it allows me to enter it completely, which is a beautiful thing. This is the work of Peter Doig, and I love his work. It's incredibly different from what I do. I find the way that he uses paint is really luscious and very painterly. And as I was saying before, his paint becomes the subject matter in the painting. It doesn't really matter what he's painting. I'm not even actually interested in his scenes. I just like the way in which he's painted. And you can see that he works a lot with accident in his painting. So he's always discovering new things about what paint can do by the kind of play with paint. Look at this one, so beautiful. And there's a uniqueness to every painting that he does. I've always really, really loved Paul Clay. And again, of course, you would never see this directly in my work, but I really love, the main thing I love in Paul Clay's work is the palette. Uh, the soft, beautiful, rich colors, but muted at the same time. And I think Rothko is a, a big inspiration of mine, and he does that really beautifully. The paint is um, always applied very translucently, and the, the surface of the canvas itself is very much a part of the final expression of the painting. Where do you find the inspiration for your art? I find inspiration in many, many ways, through nature. I'm very inspired in what I see. And my dreams. I have really interesting dreams where I'm flying over fields and valleys and there's really complex lighting situations and atmospheres happening. And I always find these the most profound dreams and incredible experiences. So I have a feeling that that comes into my paintings too. And I'm also inspired by looking at other people's work. Do you think that art, or more specifically beauty, can make the world a better place? I do. I, I think actually that's the role of the artist. I think that's why it's so profound and so important to society, because I do think that artists have the opportunity to elevate the human condition. But I do think that, that not every artist feels that way. I think that there are a lot of artists that feel that their role is to question and to provoke and to even shock and I think sometimes that uh, it can show the, de the degradation of society. I understand that it's expressing an indignity or an injustice in society that is important to expose and to perhaps enlighten people on. I think the artist is very good at reflecting because they're usually contemplating and observing the world in a very different way. It's like a, a poetic camera on the development of a society. Is there a difference between arts and entertainment? Yeah, I think there is, actually. I think that art is something that is very enduring and very lasting in your own condition, in your own spirit. I think that entertainment doesn't necessarily stay with you in the same way, and it doesn't transform you in any way. If I've experienced an amazing piece of music, 
or I've witnessed something in a, in a work of art, it can actually change my mindset about something. It can change my inner condition. What do you find the most challenging part of doing art? Ah, oh, that's a good question. So I'll answer it in two ways, about being an artist, but also making art, because I think it's an integrated thing. I think perseverance is one of the hardest things. It's a very difficult thing to face a blank canvas every day and to try to come up with new ideas and to generate things on your own with no stimulation, nobody else around you, in a quiet space, and I think that's a very difficult thing to do. It's also not something which you're necessarily making a lot of money at for a really long time. You don't feel the, the validation from the society around you for a very long time. If you're an artist, you have to tell yourself what you're going to do that day. Artists don't typically wait for inspiration. They actually start to do the work. And in the process of beginning that process, and the work, the inspiration actually comes through doing the work. Do you think that anybody can be an artist? I think that everybody has an imagination. And there are no two souls in the entire world that are the same. Everyone has the potential to express their imagination um, through encouragement. I think probably more people could be artists, but I think also it's a language, just like we learn language as a child, I think art is also a language. And if we learn the language, we can express ourselves in it. It is a mystery why some people are incredibly talented and sometimes they come out of the most difficult circumstances you could ever imagine. So there is a mystery to true brilliance in art. So it's a difficult question to answer because if you're asking if everyone could be a musician, like I can't sing, so there's no way that I could, I have not been bestowed that gift. But I can paint and I can cook and I can be creative in other ways in my life. And I think that people are multifaceted. And I think that people could probably uh, develop that side of themselves a lot more. But I know that God gave us an imagination. And then I think it'll be a very interesting world when more people are expressing themselves as artists or more as cr more creative beings than they are now.